there's a big problem if you're not eating actual food. And that's what I was saying. So a lot of people are eating processed. A lot of people are not eating enough. Our soils are massively depleted. And these foods that we're trying to get from these soils are no longer getting the same amount of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants that we need. So now what happens is that we're getting less and less loaded in nutrients and stress doesn't help either. So you're now you're also not digesting properly. So it's dropping you even more. So people don't realize this, then you're not sleeping well. And the, it's just a vicious cycle. So Welcome to Max Wellness. Today's guest is Mauro Simonetti, naturopath and teacher with a passion for integrative health. We talk about our modern epidemic of chronic disease, what we can do about it, and how we can change the future for the better by promoting health. Keep in mind that this is not medical advice. Please consult your medical doctor prior to implementing anything mentioned in this video. Thank you. All right. So uh, welcome, Mauro. I'm super happy that you're with me today. Finally, we uh, tried a few times and then we... Uh, had some um, stuff come up, but uh, I'm glad we uh, could make it um, to the final of season one also of the podcast. So welcome. And um, first and foremost, uh, I really want to talk to you uh, with you about uh, naturopathy with you today. And sure. um, you're uh, a teacher uh, in naturopathy also. And uh, I, I really love the content that you're putting out uh, to educate people on health, the promotion of health that you're doing. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I like to ask all my guests, um, how did you end up uh, practicing the way you practice these days, uh, being a naturopath and doing what you do, teaching to other naturopaths also, having your school? Uh, I'm super curious to know more about your um how you ended up doing what you do today. Yeah, sounds good. So yeah, it's, it, obviously it's been a little while we had to do this. So I do appreciate uh, I do appreciate you having me on board. It's always nice to, to have these discussions with like-minded people. I do appreciate the kind words as well. Uh, so I understand this is the season finale. Yeah. So you, you got me on the season finale. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, so you, you got me testing here. So we're good. Uh, okay, so... Um, Honestly, thank you very much. Uh, and it'll be my pleasure to discuss this with you. And uh, number one, so how I got into this uh, is basically how you, what you want to know. And uh, basically how, um, why, how I got where I am is that it's a little bit long. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, the story. So first and foremost, um, when, I, you know, uh, when I was younger, um, I could tell you that the first reason why I do what I do is that I've always been an athlete my whole life. Uh, I played hockey, I played soccer, I played, uh, I actually uh, did competitions in kickboxing. So, um, and growing up, I've, all, I've also been training and lifting weights since I was 11 years old. Uh, you know, watching guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Sylvester Stallone, Lou Ferrigno and all those guys, I, I, I used to look at them and uh, I used to say, man, I'm, I, I got inspired basically. And I, I said I wanted to kind of look like that and, My dad was quite quite a muscular individual as well, so uh, I said I can't let my dad down. I gotta look, <laughs> I gotta look uh, muscular as well. Uh, but I didn't work physically like he did. So uh, we started. Uh, I started training, and I literally been athletic my whole life. Read a lot of books. Uh, I've always been inspired by this stuff, so I've always ate up on it, right? Um, and growing up as well, one thing that inspired me, I, I gotta say, is that you know my mom was always sick. So uh, I, we went through like very hard times with my mom my whole life. I, I just saw her in and out of hospitals. And um, I always said to myself, like, this is not a way that a person should be living their life and their children should not be seeing such things from their parents either, right? Uh, so that inspired me. My mom was a big inspiration for me to do what I do today. I wanted to give people education on living better so that they don't have to go through these things and be preventive as much as possible. Uh, I also got injured playing hockey when I was younger and uh, I became a strength coach as well so that I could help other uh, young athletes not go through the damage that I, uh, that I went through and give them tools that I didn't have when I was younger. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. There you go. So that's how I got. So yeah, go ahead. Interesting. No, that, and did you at, at that point... Um... Was it that you've met a naturopath that 
changed a bit uh, your, 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 your course of seeing things? How did you encounter naturopathy and how did you discover what it was as a profession? Or um... Okay, so I no, exactly. I love that question. So basically, yes, uh, I could tell you that, you know, growing up, obviously, and reading all these books that I read and different magazines, so you, you, you hear about uh, naturopathy, you hear about uh, how people can actually take care of themselves by being in the most preventive way. Uh, so I've always been a believer from, from the very beginning since I was younger, because I saw it on myself and I saw it on other people. Um, now at a certain point, I did meet up with, um, my first ever naturopath that I used to hear about. And I ended up going into here for one particular reason for myself, which was a, a little bit of anxiety, uh, believe it or not, when I was very young and, um, you know, I, I was getting prescription for certain things and I was like, but, you know, uh, give me an example, like an antidepressant, for example, and I, I knew I wasn't depressed. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, there's something else going on and I just need to figure out what this is. Right. So this was a personal decision for me. And I basically went and see somebody and she kind of suggested um, that I, I, I take up loads of magnesium because she says, you're so athletic that you're depleting lots of it. And she says, you're stressed. Um Anyways, there's a couple of reasons why you you were depleting. So I took on some magnesium and I literally never had another panic attack or anxiety uh, issue like that again, right? So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I got inspired there too. So uh, I ended up um, being a big believer in what we do and, um, you know, got, got into education of it and learning a lot more and Fast forward to today, um, I have an association that had asked me in 2015 to develop an English naturopathic school here uh, because of the simple fact that we don't have uh, one in Quebec. So ours is like fully recognized in the sense that all insurance companies uh, recognize um, the degree that we, we provide. And that's what we did. So, but I I offered not only in English but also in in French because uh, I went to French school my whole life. So I offered mm -hmm. in, both, in both languages. Yeah, we decided to do the uh, the interview in uh, in English just before for you know resharing purposes. Uh, a lot of your audience uh, for your personal profile also, but your audience for the naturopathy school uh, mm -hmm. is broader in English. So that's why we decided to do it. But. Um, for having uh, worked with patients and clients that are uh, mutual uh, to us uh, right. who only speak French. Uh, you, you speak some some very good French also. Uh, but yeah, that's why we were doing the uh, interview in English and your school is actually in Montreal. Yes. I find it uh, very interesting that you mentioned the magnesium thing. Uh, although like, you know, like a, a whole naturopathy um, consultation goes deeper and there might have been like you know like a whole analysis around that uh and it not all cases are that simple and i'm not saying your case was that simple there, there might have been so many other things but it boiled down to some magnesium that quote unquote change uh day and night your condition uh, well, part of it was the magnesium, uh, and it's not very uncommon. And this is what uh, I found very interesting when you said that, and uh, I wanted to uh, touch base on that. Like, it's very common clinically, even in my practice, uh, we'll identify like a, a need for magnesium, uh, and we like patients will report back and say, "Wow." My anxiety has lowered so much. I sleep better now. Uh, so many other neuromusculoskeletal benefits as a chiropractor, of course. But if sleep yeah. is better, then it kind of like throws you into a uh, positive cycle of uh, everything going better. And the anxiety is also a very common one, lower in anxiety yes. after magnesium. Okay. That's not the cure all. That's not the only thing. It's a, it can get much more complex than that, but it's yeah. so common that I feel it's worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely worth mentioning. And I'm glad you said that it's, you know, like in my case, yes, for sure. And, and in other, many other cases, it might not just be uh, a magnesium uh, condition where you're maybe lower deficient, but we do know that statistically a lot of people are um, lower deficient in this particular mineral. And most people don't know this, but it's a mineral that's actually critical to over 800 metabolic functions. And um, even for the brain, uh, we, we, we don't realize uh, neurologically how, how critical it is and, and for the heart and so on and so forth. And like I said, it's over 800 metabolic functions. 
So there's so many benefits to making sure that our magnesium levels are uh, in proper function, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I do agree with you. I mean, in my, in my case, I know that I was a bit depleted because I pushed my, my body very hard. And literally for me, it was like in me, like night and day, you know, so. Yeah. And since, like you said, it's so crucial in so many metabolic um, reactions in the body, uh, it's uh, in high demand also if you're what depletes it, like if you're under a lot of stress, if mm -hmm. you're doing any kind of like f strenuous physical activity, and if you're eating uh, subpar, even if you're eating good. I saw um, an article, I'm not sure where, where it was from, but it said like that most people in the 21st century, like 80% so percent of it i don't remember the exact numbers are to some degree deficient or have suboptimal uh, magnesium intake levels that's yeah. pretty big and i don't have a hard time believing that uh, from the modern ag uh, agricultural practices like the depleted soils and also just from straight up stress environmental toxicity requiring in a way more magnesium so we yeah. have a higher need in a way uh, yeah, with exactly. the modern lifestyle and we have a lesser intake in a way from modern agriculture or foods, I would say. Uh, no, that, exactly. That's how I see it. I'm not saying it's absolute uh, truth. <laughs> but yeah, I no, but I mean, but no, but to, yeah, I just want to add to a little bit what you're saying because uh, I did share some studies um, not long ago and many, many scientists around the world are starting to be very concerned about this because of the simple fact it's not just magnesium there's other deficiencies as well uh i mean um people are not eating the way we should be eating uh eating process does not give you nutrients the reason why we eat food is because we need nutrients it's and the only place you can get nutrients is in food uh so there's a big problem if you're not eating actual food and that's what i was saying so a lot of people are eating processed a lot of people are not eating enough uh our our soils are massively depleted and these foods that we're trying to get from these soils are no longer getting the same amount of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants that we need. So now what happens is that we're getting less and less loaded in nutrients and stress doesn't help either because uh, adding stress doesn't make your food no longer as bioavailable as it should. So now you're also not digesting properly. So it's dropping you even more. So people don't realize this, then you're not sleeping well, and the, it's just a vicious cycle. So we, there's a reason why we do suggest that people do certain things, and we do, um, I, I always strongly suggest that people eat as uh, high as possible nutrient-dense foods. Uh, it's your best bet, um, making sure that you're getting what you need. Your body needs tons of this stuff daily. I love, I love that you mentioned that, like nutrient dense foods they're like the more processed the less nutrient dense and like the more caloric so it's it's all about like adding in more nutrient dense foods and i was going to ask for the solution for this because many people are like should we supplement uh, at all or if we eat quote unquote well unprocessed but but there are so many uh, degrees to that and like discussions we could have but i like the it, it just came up i think one of the good strategies is just to source your food to the farmer's market uh to get to know your farmer but to ideally grow your own food so you know from seed to harvest uh the quality uh the um, the quality of the earth it grows in everything so i think That's it's right. part of the strategy i think to to mitigate that uh lack of nutrients uh but also um yeah from stress and modern life i think to some degree when people ask me do you believe we should take supplements or not I think it's a very individual choice, but then again, on a, an optimal uh, modern lifestyle thing, there are some that might be uh, of a lot of help. <laughs> That's how yeah. I would put it. I don't know your opinion on that. When people ask you, uh, what do you think? You do, should you take some supplements on a regular basis? If so, are there some that are your favorites or that you see that are often needed? Uh, I'm yeah. pretty sure... Like if it's like my practice, it's on a very individual basis, but there's still some generalities because we all live in the same world in a, in a way. Right. So I'm curious uh, to have your opinion on that. I I could I could definitely share the same opinion. Um, I have gone through many many uh, hundreds of clients in my career, right? So like uh, I can tell you for sure, and when you look at the science, it's quite it's quite clear. So um, 
what I tell people is if it's if something's very clear, then I don't debate with it, right? And um, I know what I see on an, an individual basis, on a regular basis. Um, I know that it's it helps people just feel better, get better, uh, feel stronger, uh, revive them in many ways. So the, the, the simple fact that we're not, for the reasons that I mentioned before, I, I think the supplementing today almost became inevitable. But the problem is that we also have to be careful with the quality of products that we take. Because I do agree, like, you know, sometimes you hear like some doctors or like um, certain scientists that will say it's like it's just a waste of money and they're not wrong. Because a lot of the products on the market, when you look at the ingredients and you look at what they're, they're selling, yeah, I would have to agree with them. So we have to make sure that the quality of the product, first and foremost, is the most important when you are taking this stuff and that you're well guided by somebody that you can trust, somebody that is qualified enough to, you know, to, to endorse the right things that for you to take. Uh, if they're medicated, obviously, you want to make sure that you're doing, you're, you're suggesting these things right. And we always suggest that they speak with either their pharmacist or their doctors and stuff like that when, when they're doing this. Of course. Yeah. And do you find that there are some supplements that are arguably uh, a good thing to take on a regular basis? Uh, those are not recommendations or anything like that. And so at home, just look with your medical uh, professional beforehand. But I, I'm curious, do, do you find some tendency? I see that magnesium tends to come up a lot. It's not on everyone either. I see like fish oil, omega-3s many times for many reasons. Uh, vitamin D in here in the, the northern uh, hemisphere. Uh, yeah. But that's what I see. Some people are really big on like multivitamins and minerals. Uh, I'm curious what you, you think about all those. I, I could tell you that the, the three big ones um, is uh, most likely, and even in terms of foundational, so you have obviously mm -hmm. fish oil D3, like, uh, like you were saying, because I mean, we are in Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, every clinician I've ever heard speak, uh, they, they kind of say like, if you're helping people with their health and you're not suggesting vitamin D in Canada, you shouldn't be doing this job. <laughs> so, so we made that quite, quite clear. Um, and, um, I mean, multivitamins for the reasons that we were saying before that, you know, there's a nutrient depletion in, in our society today. So multis are important and magnesium is huge. Uh, for most people today, and I would even like to add the probiotics, mm. uh, recolonization of a healthy microbiota is uh, very, very important today. Um, even that one, you, when you hear like certain scientists, when they speak about supplementation, I, li I like to say more like nutraceuticals and um, they, they kind of say like probiotics are probably like the supplement of the century. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, there's so much research going on right now about the microbiota, it's microbiome. It, it's and we're only huge. starting to scrape the surface of it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, and, and that, that's interesting that you say that, that the depletion in the food. But what I would like to uh, put emphasis on while we're uh, in that subject, I have some some patients who bring me all their supplements and some, some literally come in with some some full bags and like like I mean, like some. I've seen some people come in with some, I was like, bring your supplements next time. Uh, so I, I, I can have a look and we, we can talk about them and, and just try and evaluate even like the need or not the need for, for them. And some people literally walked in uh, many times actually with like some luggage, you know, and like, whoa, okay. So what I like to, to tell people first and foremost don't forget the basics and the foundations, you know, like <laughs> you're, you're not going to, Supplements are going to complement, you know, they are going to supplement your right. uh, foundational diet, uh, intake of nutrient dense foods, Food. but they're not going to counteract a, a lack of it. Yeah. And I always put the analogy of like building this house with like scraps of wood that you found, find like a in the street or like in the forest anyway like that on the ground with like golden nails or screws to 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 make that house you need a solid foundation and then to complement it with some key individualized nutrients that's right that's what i would like to to add to that <laughs> yeah no but you know what i was gonna say that's that's funny too because sometimes i get the same thing um i i i've mentioned this in other types of interviews and other podcasts that i've done too and I do the same with my students. It just first, first and foremost, in our industry, we need to stay integral in what we're doing, and also know your limitations, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a reason why, especially here in Quebec, I, I, a lot of us, a lot of people look at us like uh, quackery and stuff like that. It's because of reasons like this. I have people that come and see me in my office, same thing. And it's like, uh, I, I said, okay, so bring bring whatever it is that you, you have right now. And they come here, there's like a bag with two. And I'm, and I'm more, and my first question is, okay, did you leave the store where it is? Because I'm, I'm trying to understand why you, why do you have all this? Well, my natural path told me uh, this is for this. I said, no, no, hold on a second. I have an hour, and all of this takes me five hours to explain. It doesn't even make any sense that somebody would suggest you all this stuff. So there's a reason, and I understand why they would say that. And I say this to everybody. I do understand why people would say such things, because you have some people uh, suggesting things that make absolutely no sense for their clients. It's ridiculous, and it makes the rest of us look bad. Yeah, I understand. There, There is... It's not even a profession thing. I think it's more of a, an individual. Like you see this in every profession. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's important for the public and for, for everyone, really. Like I could say that about my mechanic, or I say that I could say that about my uh, the guy who painted my house. Like not all uh, painters are, are like uh, are are really like uh, yeah doing crazy things, you know. So right. just don't. Put everyone in the same uh, category. Integrity is just yeah, exactly, exactly. I love it. And could you uh, touch base a little bit or elaborate a little bit more on the uh, th that actual situation? And funny thing, uh, when I was finishing my doctor's degree in chiropractic, I was so much into nutrition and uh, natural health that I really I wasn't sure. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do another doctor's degree. And I called to Toronto. There's a like. Because over there, there's the, the official doctor's degree in naturopathy. And I was like, this is exactly what I want to do on top of chiropractic and all those things to join both of them. And they have all these regulations that are much better, I would say, or that, that gives them much more leeway into what they can evaluate and um, much more credibility in a way also. Uh, for, for, not credibility, but like I would say in the political system, uh, yeah. it doesn't. To me, it's not more or less credibility in my eyes. But then again, politically speaking, there's there are doctors in that actual doctors in naturopathy, and mm -hmm. the program was so appealing, and there, there 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 were so many great things, and that's what I love about you also in your school, and even the content that you post out there. There's so many uh, scientific studies, and that people are not aware of. Sometimes they're like, "Oh, this is just a." popular thinking or all these, but no, science is really catching up in this uh, field of naturopathy and nutraceuticals and nutrition. Um, so I love it. And so, yeah, I really wanted to do another doctor's degree on top of what I do just to get wow. all those certifications. But yeah, uh, so could you elaborate on the situation in the, the whole Canada and Quebec versus the rest of the, the country almost as uh, naturopathy as a profession and how it's recognized or not? Yeah, of course. My, my pleasure. Well, that's exactly what it is, right? Um, and I'm, I'm glad you said that because um, it's probably one of the oldest science in, in, in the world. It's one of the oldest. We've been, we've been utilizing different forms of uh, remedies like uh, for thousands of years. Um, but, uh, you know, here in Quebec, because we don't have a regulation, like you said, we don't have an order here for naturopathy. It's not recognized. Uh, so all we have is different associations that we can just have a license with. And we have obviously, under, we, are, we're, we are under rules and regulations, but there's not, not an order, right? So that's why here we are kind of like not recognized. Uh, but the rest of Canada... They are. Uh, the rest of Canada, pretty much everywhere, uh, you need to... I mean, people say there's no science, but I have to take four years. I have to get a bachelor's in science before I go into naturopathic school. So why would I need to learn science and get a bachelor's in my science before getting into a naturopathic degree? So I got to get my bachelor's in science, then I got to do four years full-time in a naturopathic school. Um, when you're done, you got to go pass an exam to get a license with the order. And then you can call yourself a naturopathic doctor. And But this is the rest of Canada. Whereas here, uh, we are only the naturopath diplomé, like we say, right? right? So that's the only way we could, uh, we could be uh, classified as because we don't have an order here.
Yeah, and uh, oh, hopefully at some point it's gonna, you know, e evolve into. I would love to see it in Quebec, like in the rest of the country, for that matter, to be recognized and re regulated around, you know, like uh, such um, as such. Uh, that would be great, not only for the public, but also for the whole. Uh, <laughs> in the end, really, for the public, because everybody wins, really, like the the therapist, but also the whole. We have a a, a big issue with our health system. Uh, yes. Uh, across the country, but also uh, like in the province. So I think because uh, naturopathy, if you were to describe it, it leads me to my next question. If you were to describe naturopathy, um, how would you describe it? Yeah. So, okay. So I like, I do like that you said that because I, it's something that we talk about often, even with my clients, because people, you know, we do have a serious issue with our healthcare system and we're heavily taxed. It's not like it's free for us. You know, that's what's the most frustrating. Um, we're extremely heavily taxed and we're, we're some of the least, um, we're some of the, uh, the pop, we're one of the populations with the least amount of services. This, is, this doesn't make any sense. Um, and if you want to help alleviate the system, well, the best way is to make your population healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if that's something you want, then let us help you. <laughs> because we can we can help you alleviate a lot of that a lot of those problems right so um i, I mean i'm a, i'm 45 years old i'm healthy and very strong you know i'm not the type of person that's causing a burden on the healthcare system <laughs> so what do i do i mean i train hard and i i eat super well like it's it's, it's pas compliqué. like we say you know it's very <laughs> very simple stuff so th these are the things that you know like uh we, we do we're not natural we, and that you promote yeah we promote how to be preventive and keep keep yourself as healthy as possible. That's the best way I can put it. We, ju we just teach people to live a healthier lifestyle, basically. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And and what I find it also like that there's no one size fits all. There's the, definitely some general rules regarding stress, uh, food, diet. And that's why we talk about these so much because, uh, of course, that's what we can deliver to the general public and the listeners without it being like some very individual uh, recommendations but then again in a consultation like on a one-on-one -on -one, we like how i see it having had many naturopathy um consultations before uh it, it's really the art and, and doing some kind of like um accompanying work with my, my my clients in a different way as a chiropractor but then again i can see it for all professions uh promoting health and uh, prevention it's really about ident helping the, the client or the patient identify where their um, uh, lacks are or like the where, where there is there there needs there's some work to be done in a way whether it's diet uh, intake and all these things and this is where also by the way uh, professionally and politically and legally also we we don't treat any uh, conditions and all these things right. and, and you don't but it's about also like interdisciplinarity so working sometimes with nutritionists sometimes with uh med many times with medical doctors and all their other um medical professionals to help them uh As we should. It, it's a lot of coaching actually and having all that knowledge to enlighten them on, you know what, you have this uh, health condition or this health objective, and here's where uh, you might have a, a lack or, or a need uh, for some this or that supplement or this lifestyle change. Because we talk about supplements, but many, many times it's a really lifestyle changes because yeah. most of the chronic diseases, even like all kinds of ailments. And I would even say as a chiropractor, chronic uh, pain or problems, musculoskeletal problems, uh, root from um, an accumulation of either stress or um, suboptimal uh, lifestyle practices. <laughs> I would say it like that. I don't say I like to say bad. I think just suboptimal, either from, once again, <laughs> food, diet, sleep, or rest movement too much or not enough <laughs> uh dot 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 you know like relationships all these things so it's all important and i believe as a naturopath you also um like have an inquiry for this like okay yes there's the lifestyle but it, it goes beyond food also 
Um, anyway, I, I'm kind of drifting away here, but oh, uh, I, I, I totally agree. And you know, like that's what I try to explain is that it's at the end of the day for me, it's about helping people. It's not. It's not. It's never about me. So when I have a person that's sitting in front of me, I I, I always try to explain that you know this is where I can stop. This is what I can do for you. And if you need certain other things, well, you do need to speak to your doctor. You do need to go see your doctor or you do need to see a dietitian or a nutritionist or whatever it is that, you know, I, I'm, I always tell my clients where they need to go uh, when they need specific, uh, specific uh, services. Um, I'm, I don't shy away from that. I believe that if it's about the person that's in front of me, well, then uh, we should all be working together as a committee. Because if we all say that we actually care about the person in front of us, well then, yeah, we all we all need our doctors, we all need our dietitians, we all need our osteopaths and chiro chiropractic, whatever it is that it is. Cho pick and choose whatever it is that you need to go to and, and go to that. I'm not anti-medicine. You know, I'm not a person who's... Uh, I, I like to come here. I'm not an extremist of any of any sort. So we're, we are in, almost in 2023. And I mean, if somebody has an acute condition, you need to be cured. You need to, you, yeah, you, I'm not anti-medicine. You need to go see your doctor where no one's going to tell you otherwise. Uh, but if we can live a certain way where you can prevent certain conditions, then yeah, if we can teach you that, why not? Yeah. And that's what, yeah. uh, like, uh, the latest data shows also, like even the scientific studies and the literature, like many and many, if not most of the chronic health conditions, uh, that's burdening our system, our health system, but just our population in general so bad. is associated with lifestyle and in that way, preventable. And also many of them are reversible or, or you have, you can have some degree of effect on it by lifestyle recommendations and also then then again a personalized approach of seeing where and as you said we talk about all these things like um the the the, the diet uh, psychological level but also then again like with our patients our clients we we, we direct them them to the the appropriate uh you know like professional also we don't like exactly. address all those or we don't you know, like we're not psychologists, we're not like uh, nutritionists, we're not no. medical doctors. Uh, it's important to understand here, but we guide them to which seems to be the priority, and we communicate with those other professionals to, um, in the interest of the patient, so they can get better. Because it's not one facet only; it's multifaceted. And I think by, and that's why I do this podcast, and that's why I wanted you on. Also, it's to. Um, shed some light on what's um, possible and what other professionals do and how it could help I, like the population in general, but the, um, the public and the patients that we have. Sometimes people are like, oh, I didn't know like that a naturopath could do that or like that that's how they work. So, oh, it could, it could really help this or that patient. So perfect. And it doesn't replace any other, you know, approach. No. No, exactly. And, and I love that you, you said that. I, I, this is a great reason to do these podcasts. I think that also a lot of people have um, a brainwashed idea of what it is that we also do. Uh, some people, you know, a lot of times people just walk very close minded and um, don't ask questions and don't just open up and say, OK, well, what is it about? You know, like they, they just heard their friend or somebody or their parents say, well, this is what that is. Don't do the quackery. Don't do this. Don't do that. And those are, oh, don't, okay, I'm never going to see these people. You know, it's like, so, yeah, so that's what I was saying. So, like, it's pretty much, uh, th that's what it comes down to. I, you know, like, I ne every on a daily basis, I, I'm, I'm always telling people, well, you go see your doctor for this. Uh, go see, ask your doctor to see a specialist for this particular condition. You need, you need to go see your gastroenterologist. Uh, get yourself tested. See what's going on. Um, you know what? Maybe your, your kid does need a, a therapist. You know, maybe it's good that, that your kid goes and talks to somebody. Um, it's, you know, like, I don't, I don't try to pretend to be something I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm just trying to help people as best as I can and direct them into, into taking the proper decisions for their health. I love it. And like I said, like we have like a, a record number of, um, chronic diseases, uh, right. in the 21st century, uh, we touched on, you know, like the, the food supply in a way, or our intake of, uh, less and less nutrient dense foods. Uh, yeah. I would add to that, um, 
sleep we like sleep exercise like even even more in the last couple of years with that i got work from home kind of thing i have some patients uh of course i've uh, we we talked about it <laughs> at this point but that would never leave their house um never even see like the the the, the daylight you know like uh if if you don't look out of the window um and that's been a big one you know people could like have breakfast and start work on a screen and then go to bed without even going outside unless they have like a dog or something right. and, and that on top of many other factors uh but it really uh, i saw a decline into many many uh health factors uh on my patients but in the population in general also so uh, Oh yeah, listen, 100%. And I'm I'm glad you brought that up because sleep is a big one. And I see that every day, every single day. And that's another beauty of what we do is we ask a lot of questions, right? So we try to we try to see what's going on for me to be able to actually give you some solid advice. And you, people don't realize how important sleep is. It's a, I don't know why it's so underrated and uh, I want to touch base a little bit on that because sleep is super critical. This is where everything happens. Um, this is where you rejuvenate, you repair, you, I mean, everything pretty, pretty much heals. And, you know, I have sometimes some people, they're, they're telling me I'm having this issue, that issue, I'm, I'm just, I'm breaking down. Uh, I'm almost lacking energy. There's, there's 101 things going on. And it's like, okay, uh, I go down the list of my questions and I get to the point. It's like, but do, are you even sleeping well? I was like, well, no, I, so I, I don't like to sleep. I have too much to do. I do four or five hours. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, there's your that pretty much is one of your biggest problems. And oftentimes when people tell me they're sleeping more, they're sleeping better. Uh, moral, like this, this is better, that's better, everything is gone. Well, yeah, you weren't sleeping. How do you want your body to recover and do things? I have guys that want to put on a lot of muscle, you know, like, I don't want to put... And they're they're stressed out of their minds. They're sleeping uh, five hour nights because they're loaded with work. And they're, well, who's the CEO and who's doing whatever? I'm like, okay, well, just know that you're not, you know, you're gonna go to the gym. That's fine, but it's not the gym that you put on your muscle. Uh, the gym is where you're tearing your muscle. So if you want to put on muscle, you gotta you gotta eat right and you gotta sleep. Because if you ain't sleeping, <laughs> you can just scrap your whole thing all together. You gotta rest and rebuild. And even for losing weight, same thing. I would say, even well for 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 health in general, for for any health objective, really. Uh, I, I talked about uh, sleep a lot in the um, another podcast on fertility with the fertility expert, and like we we emphasize so much sleep, but it it's so overlooked. Yes. And even for myself in the past, uh, now I see much more the importance of it, like with a baby. But then again, on top of that, like you could take all the supplements you want. You can do all the, the things. But if sleep is not on par, you're you're done. Yeah. You're, I was going to say you're missing out a lot and you, you, you might yeah. just, just overcompensate on all these other aspects just to... Um, you know, be even, but if you sleep, everything else is going to go like it's the natural, you know, way of their body to just heal, reset, yeah. rebuild, clean itself, everything. So if you don't do it, you can supplement all you want. You can, you know, like do all the other things, but you're going to lack uh, significantly. That's what I, yeah, that's how I would and put it. No, exactly. But no biochemistry in your body can work uh, mm -hmm. if you're not sleeping properly it's it's not complicated it's not an opinion i mean it's the stuff we learn I, i learned this in books when i was just a teenager we learned this in school yeah you know? and like, we minimize so, it somehow we we kind of it might be wishful thinking from our uh, modern society we always want to be doing something we have so many projects to achieve uh but then again we put aside sleep but uh this is yeah. The most common mistake I would say clinically that I see, and I've seen it for myself in my own personal journey, but also overlooked even for, for people, but for clinicians also. And I would even draw the attention of uh, clinicians here. If you're like, I would, all my new patients, I want to know, like even like ongoing patients, sometimes I'll go back to how many hours do you sleep? At what time do you go to bed? Do you wake up refreshed? Most people say no, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Most people wake up tired. That's not normal, okay? You might be like uh, having a huge depth of sleep. That's okay. You just got to acknowledge it. <laughs> And from there, we work around like rebuilding that. But 
yeah, sleep um, without waking up like a few times a night, you know, like uh, falling asleep uh, in a proper time frame and also going to bed at the right time. Just around that sleep thing, most people fail that, you know, like optimal <laughs> sleep tests. <laughs> and yeah. you can do all the good chiropractic treatments you want if you have a chronic condition, especially. Uh, you can do all the diet, all the exercise is going to be even worse if you don't sleep enough uh, to some degree. Uh, the wrong type of exercise, all the supplements, all the anyway, all the life hacks. If you don't sleep, you're missing out. I'm just going to, yeah. I wanted to put some emphasis on that, but clinicians no, ask your patients how they sleep. If they don't sleep, it will take, it might take longer for them to heal. Yeah. Uh, it might come back more often. It might recur. They might be more fragile. Uh, this just on a neuromusculoskeletal standpoint, but on their mood, on their energy, on their everything. So. You got it. Same thing, you know, like we were saying before, even for fat loss, I have that, I have many of those cases and, you know, sometimes people, they start to stagnate from their fat loss and I keep telling them, until you get your, your sleep in check, I mean, your GH, I mean, growth hormones, they secrete when you're sleeping and without that, losing body fat is practically impossible. So like you, 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 need, to, you need to get your sleep in. And I want to touch base as well because you were asking about chronic, the chronic problems of today, right? The chronic diseases. But uh, that's that's basically what it comes down to. People are just not taking care of themselves and they're all highly stressed. Mm -hmm. So if you're not eating right, you're not moving, you're, you're, you're beyond. I have people that are constantly, I, you know, like Max, I'm, I'm driving around and I'm seeing people just smashing fast food in their cars while they're driving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's yeah. what's going on here? Could yeah. you take five, take five to ten minutes for yourself? Park the car, eat some food, and by the way, choose better food. Like like what happened? To, eating was a ritual for millions of years for us, and now it, it, it became a chore. Like people are just, oh, I just need to eat. I, I didn't have time to eat. I didn't, but listen, it's not a, it's not an option. It's not a choice. <laughs> you don't eat. You don't live. Yeah. You know, like, what the I, hell, man? What's going on? I mean, this whole fast-paced life, and I think it's from times of crisis that, like, we 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 reevaluate. But it's there comes some suffering uh, <laughs> with that, of course, as a society, as individuals, and sometimes people, as individuals or as societies, are like, okay, enough is enough, and then okay, let's have the humility to take a step back and see why we got into this mess, either again, yeah. personally or as a society. And I think this whole fast paced life has like kind of like distracted us for, from what's important or, or the, the essence of living. I'm going to get deeper there, but like this guy eating fast food in his car, he's probably in a rush because he has this meeting at this time and the kids at the, right. you know, all these things. So fast food, well, of course, it's going to be processed. Like if you take the time to prepare a nice meal, to go get that tomato in the, the garden, well, it takes time. So everything has been super system. Like there's this super system from that tomato and like a hydroponics thing like to the anyway. So I think we it all boils down to going back to the basics, how we're designed, basically, just just, you know, like from seed soil to uh our food and taking the time to just if you're eating like you said like this guy it's, it's a great example yeah. uh but it, it's so common that's why i laughed i was like i see this all the time so much. <laughs> you know so like much. honking and being traffic in traffic you're like ah might as well eat but the, eating in a stressful state is the worst thing you can do really <laughs> for it's your horrible. digestive system or your yeah. just overall body so it, it, yeah. it's become like a caricature. Is that even like a, an English word uh, of how like our society is and what's making us sick, really? Okay. Super stressed, uh, putting sleep aside because we don't have time, uh, putting a good food preparation and sitting down and going to get proper uh, food ingredients because uh, it takes time. So good food, well, not good food, but uh, prepared food, uh, all these things. It takes a toll on our health and our well-being in the end. So, uh, of course. And we're, we're seeing it every single day right in front of our very own eyes. 
And listen, I'm, I'm 45 years old. I'm in my fifth decade of life. And uh, I, I've seen nothing but deterioration. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an observing person. This is what I do. It's not my fault. God made me this way. I, I am a, a person who I step outside and I literally see everything. Uh, I'm, I have a very, um, I'm very alert with everything that goes on. And the only thing I've been noticing in, in terms of humanity is a, a massive deterioration. And this deterioration is coming from make, what's making us weaker and weaker generationally. Again, we're not eating what we're supposed to eat. We're not moving the way we were designed to move. We're not sleeping properly. We're massively stressed. I mean, the last, uh, in this year alone, I think I, I shared the three or four different huge studies showing how males are losing all, for, all the, you know, the sperm count and fertility is down, their testosterone is down. Um, yeah, I mean, if you look at what's going on with guys today, uh, it's everything you need to know. So I don't need a study to also show me. I see it and I, I'm able to observe by myself. And I was uh, last week or two weeks ago, I shared a humongous um, meta-analysis study uh, where, I mean, scientists all around the globe who have looked at 53 different countries and they're saying that they're extremely concerned about our future because we are, in the last 20 years, we've dipped 50% in our fertility. 50% sperm count. That's huge. That's huge. 20 years max. So they're saying that we're concerned if this continues, we're going to go in extinction. So what are we doing to change this? People are, again, we need to go back to what we used to do. What did we do for millions of years? Move, eat well. Sleep. It's a, it's so, um, I, I think it's a shame that like we need now, now it, well, that's how the, the system is. And that's how like the, the modern science is. It, 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 It's ha it has its good, you know, like uh, aspects, but mm -hmm. I think it's a shame sometimes that's that we need some um, studies, some actual scientific studies to validate some very basic ancestral uh, principles that we've yeah. like evolved from in the first but, place. Sorry, Nutrition, sleep, movement, you know. Yes, <laughs> we and need I, some I'm studies to to prove that they're very good for our health. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And isn't that in, sorry to 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 interrupt like that but isn't no, that so for me it's very annoying and it's very um i get very upset because something that is just sheer common sense that is a base to humanity and some people even they need scientific studies to see this it, what is it that did you lose your common sense like is it is, is it because it's common sense is no longer common Like the basics of life, you don't need any science degree to understand this. <laughs> okay, so it's as simple as that. And we're seeing this full frontal. And then some of these people, they're so set in their ways that even when you give them a study proving this, well, no, it's not possible. <laughs> okay, so you're impossible to speak to. You, you just you want to stay close-minded. And unfortunately, uh, it's situations like this that does not help us evolve in the right direction. True. And th that's why I say like in the end, like it, when people are ready, they come to us, they come, they, they, they come looking like when the, the student is ready, the master shows up, it's the same thing. They will Google uh, a few things and then get into <laughs> either our offices. And then at some point, you know, like, because they're ready to get there. Uh, and many times brings me back to my earlier point. It yeah. comes from... Uh, after like a period of either like suffering or like hitting a wall, either many times on our health or like in our relationships and, and something else, a crisis will foster evolution. And then people are going to open up their uh, horizons because what they were doing kind of like they, they get to the um, evidence of, okay, this is not working obviously. So I'm going to yeah. open my paradigm and see like, how could I do things differently? But, takes humility uh and from there if like you said if they're set in their ways already and it's not like a, it's still working yeah. to some degree to their comfort zone well you're, you're gonna come up with all the studies and all the common sense that you want they're just gonna disregard it so yeah. uh, i totally understand how it can become frustrating though as a, yeah. us looking at like the society's problems as a health um uh, 
as health practitioners, but also uh, cost wise, like you said, it's not free. The system is not free. Uh, and there are some solutions uh, uh, that could you know, like be brought up in a way, like I'm not saying we have all the solutions out there, but yeah, then again, exactly. prevention wise, uh, regarding chronic conditions, chronic one. diseases. And we say that all the time, like we've worked with uh, many uh, p- common patients, common clients, and I've seen some massive transformations. And many times it's all back to these basics. And as you said, uh, this whole, um, fertility rate sperm count decreasing uh fertility is directly related to overall health status really and that's what we talk about for like an hour or so with the fertility expert in my other episode uh we go into more details but then again like with the pesticides and the chemicals and just the environment but it boils down to stress chronic stress and our environment and basically nutrition so very, very basic, but also hard in a uh, frenetically fast-paced modern world. So that's the challenge here. And this is where you come mm-hmm. in. This is where uh, practitioners come in uh, to just with all the knowledge that we have. Because for us, it's uh, just, you know, like a daily thing and uh, it's clear. But for people, that they're... they're just there's been this disconnection from, uh, you know, you go to the, the, the grocery store and you see these... Um, sugar cereals for kids and it, it yeah. says like 14 nutritional like uh uh components so and the other box says still the same sugary thing but just different uh, you know uh makeup oh 12 so you're gonna buy the 14 thinking you're doing well for your kids you know but yeah. then you're feeding them sugar basically for breakfast yeah. anyway and so complete, people complete do their process. best uh into their own fast-paced lives and i understand i totally get it uh but by i firmly believe by just reaching out educating having those discussions if they can hear like planting seeds uh hopefully that's part of the solution to get it out i guess uh, get us out of this mess (laughs) that we're in as a society (laughs) and exactly and it it takes the work of everybody even even the the population everybody has to realize what's going on and everybody has to jump on board because if you know, like we say in French, c'est beau parler, but like if we if we all don't take that first step, nothing's going to change. In order for things to change, everybody needs to be on the same page, or at least the majority. Mm. That's the only way things can happen. We got to be able to get out of our comfort zones. And that's another very interesting one that I've talked about with a, a PhD, uh, Eric Simard, from a, like in... Um, longevity basically and he was like it's, it wasn't even like the first ingredient for living a long uh, 100 years old life it wasn't necessarily just food and lifestyle it was having like being able to get out of our comfort zones and i found it very interesting that. that he said that from the research and all those things it's kind of like the 100 year old personality is to be yeah. able to get out of our comfort zones to make those different cho- consciously choices because you know it's better for you it's not your habit but this habit that got you unhealthy if you're if you want to reverse it or change it you got to be able to get out of your comfort zone so i I, I loved it and the human evolved in that way like if you're going to the gym it's not going to be necessarily fun in the first place especially if you've never worked out before but the body will adapt to that little stressor which is not fun quote unquote kind of like ice dips and all these other I would say more intense things, but the body really reacts well to us getting out of our comfort zones. Absolutely. Uh, Whatever the level or the area. Yeah. And I, and I, and I uh, agree. And I, you know, I tell people, uh, I talk, uh, I talk to people about the comfort zone every day because I got to get them out of that comfort zone. Right. So, um, you know, if you want to see changes, you got to make changes. It's, it's not complicated. Right. So, um everything we listen every single person in in this world we've been conditioned a certain way we're products of our upbringing we're products of our environment the only way we can do things is to improve ourselves is by reconditioning who we are and what we're doing so i really love that you said that and that uh that that uh, phd uh doctor said that that's great yeah and uh what i also love like uh, having this discussion with you i love that you like you're 
a very goal. You're setting a very great example. Also, I see on your social media, the posts that yes. you're doing to be informative, but also you post your, like, I see you, you posting your meals, you're posting, and you're a family man. So you have like some kids to feed also. You're, you're, you're having that possibility of living like this very uh, stressful, strenuous, fast-paced life, but you're navigating it and you're showing it to people. Of course, it, it, It's never perfect. You're you're not showing like all the the, the darker faces like like we all do, but also uh, like you're, you're oftentimes posting your meals, and I love it. And I don't like you know like uh, pre-made um, uh, recommendations, but I'm curious for our audience. What do you what have you had for breakfast today, or what do you typically typically have for breakfast? Okay, I like. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so, a, yeah yeah. So I'll tell you what, what I do and, and why, and, yeah. um, what, uh, you know, like for, for me, first and foremost, so what, what I'd like to say is that obviously I need to keep my protein high. Okay. Cause I, I do work out very hard and my body does demand more than the general person. Um, but, uh, so just to answer your question this morning, I did have a bit of like uh, leftover uh, filet mignon. So I diced a bit of that, threw in some eggs and some cheese, and I had uh, a little bit of avocado with that. So I'm, as you can see, I have some protein and fats in my meal. Um, and that's something that um, I do recommend because when you look at the way the systems of the body and our biochemistry is made, uh, our, our body responds best when we have uh, that combination of protein and fats in the morning. So um, you'll feel better, you'll feel more alert. Don't, people for, don't know this, but 60% of the brain is fat. And the brain does demand a lot. So if you want to be, if you want to have an active and strong brain for the day, um, I suggest, strongly suggest you make that combination in the morning. It's uh, it's a beautiful thing. I did have some berries as well. I do enjoy berries in the morning. Nothing high on, very strong on carbohydrates. Unless I'm doing a lot of powerlifting, then that's a different story. I will have a bit of, uh, for my glycogen. But uh, usually this is what I, uh, I I have for breakfast, yeah. I love it. I was just curious also, like I said, I, I, I'm not about like all at uh, one size fits all, but I just found from your post that uh, your, your uh, breakfasts really uh, look a lot like mine. And funny thing, like last week I, I did this thing. I didn't post it. I took the picture and I was like, in the end, like I went to work and, and forgot, but it was literally this, like uh, I don't do the dairy myself because I, I, I'm more sensitive to it. It's a, you know, like an individual basis, of course, but I did like the leftover uh, steak from last night uh, with an uh, avocado and uh My girlfriend, she finds this. Uh, she finds it uh, gross that I eat like, and I ate it c cold. <laughs> but me, I don't mind. Uh, but then again, some people is different. But like, yeah. I find that this and a little bit of like, you know, like uh, berries and all. Uh, I respond so well to that um, type of breakfast and I have so much energy. Uh, yeah. But then again, it's not a rule. It's not a personal recommendation out there. Try it out though and see how you feel. Uh, yeah. But I really uh, respond well to, especially if I have a hard day of work, a big um, morning. Uh, oh, yeah. Protein and fat, uh, it's going to work very well. A little bit of carbs, of, of course. Exactly. Uh, Your calories, when you do that, your calories make sense and you're eating very nutrient dense. Yeah. So your, your body recognizes that, right? So you're definitely super well fed for many, many hours of your day. Yeah, and, and no that's... no ups and downs and very well focused with my patients. Exactly. I, I love it. So that, that's why I was like, do you eat this on a regular basis? And sometimes it's going to be other things, but it's always going to be around that uh, base. So I, I was curious. Absolutely. Um, I would say uh, we've touched many, many subjects. Uh, I love it. Uh, if there's anything you would like to add, please uh, go for it. Uh, I have a... Um, One or two questions for you also. Uh, I like. I would like to ask you, like, what, what's the, the favorite thing um, about what you do uh, yeah. as a naturopath, but also like coaching clients and all these things? What's the favorite thing that you love about what you do? Okay. Well, man, I, I love this question. There's a lot I can tell you, but uh, I would say the thing I love the most about what I do is um, watching my clients get better. Um, that for me is the most gratifying feeling. Um, it's a, it's beautiful to see how people, uh, you know, you, you create like a family with a lot of these people and, and watching them just, 
I don't know, get better. It's it's hard to explain. It's uh, for me, it's almost like a drug. Uh, I, I just every single day I have I have students that do internships for me, and they, they you know they they come in to see how how to do the, the job and um, you know the, everything that that goes with it. And many students have told me they said to me, "Model, we noticed that when you're working." As soon as you're with the client, because I'm very jokey. I like to joke around. I like to have a good time, even with my clients. But they're like, but when they're talking, it's like you have a tunnel vision. I'm like, 100%. That's because I care about the person that's in front of me. So I, I need to hear what they're, what they're, you know, what, they're, what they want to share with me today. So um, at the end of the day, Max, I care. And I love what I do. I would love watching people getting better. And I think that's the thing that's the most... Um, I think that's the most gratifying in what I do. Is that it's that. And jumping onto that question, actually, like, what would you say uh, is the most most important trait or quality uh, to have for doing what you do? Uh, it goes back to what we were saying before: be integral, be mm -hmm. integral. Sometimes people ask me, "What's what's the secret to your success?" And I'm like, uh, you know, some, the first time I was asked that a couple of years ago, I was like. As like, what do I even say? Like for me, it's I, I just be integral. Like for me, that's what you know what, Max. That's what it comes down to. It's integrity. When you're doing that, I think people feel that, and people see that you care. Uh, yeah. Be passionate of what you're doing. I'm very, very passionate of what I do. So th that that uh, we see that in my posts as well. I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and uh, and sometimes I'm being nice. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah well being passionate sometimes it can be polarizing also or being like got yeah. some reactions but then again uh, i think that's what people love also uh i will speak for myself but i feel like i'm very um uh passionate about what i do and people feel that they, they feel that you're passionate about having them be better and about finding what's going on with them and uh, identifying yeah. where they need work and how they're going to work about it so um I love That's it. Right. Uh, and what would you say um, also is the, the biggest takeaway from our discussion today uh, on holistic health, on, the, you know, like uh, prevention, uh, I would say promotion of health uh, for, for, I'll bring it back to our um, issues as a society or population, even individuals uh, health-wise uh, yeah. nowadays in the 21st century, in the light of uh, what we've discussed also, the fertility decreasing, uh, chronic disease, disease being uh, has skyrocketed despite all the evolution of like scientific advances and research and all those things, we still have a record of uh, chronic disease. What yeah. would you say is the biggest takeaway from our discussion, or that that could that listeners could uh, remember yeah. for, for from what we've talked about? Yeah. So, um, for I think what I'm going to say is um, care about yourself, mm. and if you care about yourself, um, you'll you'll do what is right for you and your family. And that's how you also will educate your children to take care, take better care of themselves for the future. Because ah. ultimately, if we want to have a better future, it starts with us and how we we share the right tools for our kids. I think that's the best takeaway I can I can give you today. With Love everything it. we discussed, yeah, and by being examples, uh, being the change we want to see in the world, you know, like the, the good old uh, saying and uh, you got it. I love it. Um, last question, I would say, well, totally unrelated. Uh, when did you have to go? <laughs> uh, I got a jet in about five minutes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I have so many things, but I don't want to open some, you know, like other uh, uh, passionate discussions. So perfect. Well, I would say uh, there's a, a few things I wanted to discuss. We, we'll, we'll do it uh, in some other episode at some point or uh, into some other interview, but there's definitely like the, the NFH just... Um, the company, the supplement company that you've talked about, you know, like professional health products and uh, like, you know, the quality. Uh, it's the one company that you're um, 
a representative for and that you work a lot with and for and that that I love by the way Canadian company uh with lots of naturopathic doctors um lots of information but lots of courses also on top of that uh, that I love so for health practitioners Definitely check out NFH. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Also, your school of naturopathy that I would love to uh, put in the show notes where you provide lots of also uh, courses, teaching, trainings. If people, uh, practitioners, or even people who want to study more about naturopathy and the holistic health, uh, definitely check this out. And from there, where can people uh, reach you on social media, uh, on the internet? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do have, well, I have two websites, right? Uh, yeah. One is Advanced Naturopathy Institute of Montreal, uh, with that which is your school. Uh, we do have EvolveMontreal.com, which is my, uh, my practice and uh, my strength and conditioning um, uh, business. Um, I mean, I'm also on uh, Facebook. If people search me, I'm on uh, Instagram. Uh, those are the main ones I like to to be on a little bit more. Um, so people can find me there. Um, for NFH, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I do like, okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit quickly here. So what happened is that, uh, you know, I've been using... For me, if I endorse something with clients for people to to try and like I was saying before, it's got to be of uh, great quality or otherwise you're just wasting your time and money. Um, if there's no research behind what I'm using and I won't use it myself and my family isn't using it, I can't endorse it. That's just how I am. So I like that uh, the products, um, obviously, as you can see, I have them here. I <laughs> they're, they're living on my desk, so I know I use them myself. My clients see that I'm not, I'm not lying. Um, and, um, what happens is that NFH, for example, like I was using many different companies that have a lot of research and something happened with one, one of the companies, they ended up selling one company that was using a lot and I enjoyed them very much because their science was, was amazing. Um, but, uh, they ended up selling to a um, type of like MLM company. And they started uh, mingling with the formulas a little bit. And anyways, the company went a little bit uh, on the weird side, we're going to say. Uh, so it, for me, in my practice, I had to find a different brand. And what happened is that I said to myself, you know what? If I'm going to find something that is research-based, I'm going to start looking for a company as well that is local. And I'm going to try to support local as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm, very, uh, I'm very big on that. And uh, I ended up finding uh, NFH. I ended up contacting them. Um, and, uh, they had heard about me. So we, I was invited to go and, and visit their, their lab here. So that would, by the way, was, uh, was a lot of fun because the lab, the lab is absolutely impressive. And it's probably one of the, um, it's one of the two most impressive labs in North America, to be honest. Mm. Uh, there's certain devices that we have that only two labs in all of North America have. So just to show you, okay. And we employ over 40 scientists. Uh, 12 of them, I believe, have PhDs. So everything that we use is highly, highly research-based. There's a lot of evidence in everything that we're doing. And we use only the highest uh, quality ingredients. We have no choice. And as we can, I can even tell you, see, like, uh, all ingredients have been validated by third-party laboratory for identity, potency, and purity. So just to say that we have three labs <laughs> that investigate the quality of, of, our, of our products. And the fun part is that the research, every formula they make, uh, basically the research supports that that's the best formula for whatever reason you want to use it for, right? So um, fast forward, uh, they, what we did is because NFH has been, it's very uh, science-based, they've been part of uh, other uh, scientific schools across Canada mm -hmm. because um, naturopathy is recognized there. So, you know, these are mostly things that uh, natural, natural therapies will use. Um, so they, they ended up just growing bigger across Canada and many places in the U.S. So in, in Quebec, people just didn't hear about them as much. So they had asked me, they said, since, since you teach it so well and you know so much about these nutraceuticals, let, you know, so we, we jumped on board together and um, I, uh, I do this a little bit part time with them uh, and I speak to uh, qualified practitioners like yourself and um, making sense of the, of the brand. 
Awesome. Well, thanks for touching base on that. Uh, I definitely love your products. Uh, the, the quality is uh, very impressive and uh, I've had some very great uh, results and feedback from from patients for working with those products and uh, I love them. So, uh, and th awesome. the website, how it's made, the company, uh, the resources they put out and like you said, every... Um, There's so much science on all the descriptive, you know, like uh, um, the description of the monographs of the products. There's so much research on many, many things that it's related to and that it can yeah. help with. Uh, so it's very good for practitioners to have on hand. And uh, I learn a lot every day, although like I'm into this like on a daily basis, just by um, reading those uh, descriptive uh, um things and the the website and all the uh there, there's workshops all these things i love the company yeah. so that's my feedback really? on it <laughs> that's it and thanks and i appreciate you saying that they, they do a lot of teaching as well right so we have a lot of different clinicians and scientists yeah. that will give different webinars on uh different aspects of uh of health right so uh we we believe in that we believe in teaching our teachings also give credits so a lot of uh, practitioners end up getting credits as a, this is literally considered like a class for a lot of these people. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it is, there's a reason why it's the practitioner's brand of choice in, in the country. Um, we'll say how Canada likes us very much. Yeah. So they, it, says, it says something. They, they, they really enjoy the quality of what we do here. Yeah qualities up there and uh, really like always the latest science and the clinicians who like you know there's ongoing learning uh always with the latest uh stuff that comes out so i love it uh, for that and the quality and so many other things so uh practitioners yeah. definitely check this out it's not available to the general public but uh still check it out uh just for learning but also for uh a whole uh, selection of uh, great supplements. Uh, I love the brand NFH.ca. I'll put it in the description. So <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Mauro. Uh, it's yeah. been an amazing discussion. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a pleasure to have you uh, another uh, for another discussion. I, I feel like we could have gone for hours. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way. And I really appreciate you having me on board today. This is cool that you're doing this. Keep, keep up the good work. And uh, your English is impeccable too, by the way. So uh, <laughs> awesome work, man. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. You got it, champ. Be good, man. All right.